Hi, in this video, we want to take a look at missing value clustering. All right, so we're going to be clustering on binary data. So uh, how to think about this is that we're going to go through, we're going to look at our data. If we have a missing value, we're going to treat that as being a one. If it's not missing, it's a zero. So why do we need to do this? Well, a lot of functions and a lot of uh, mathematical models and statistics cannot handle missing values. So when I have a missing value, I need to make a decision. Do I omit the variable? Do I omit the observation? Do I put in like surrogate data for that missing value? We have to make a decision. Well, missing value clustering helps give me insight into the features of the missing values that I have to work with. So one thing we want to do, we want to make sure we understand the, the clay that we are making pottery with when we are uh, doing statistical modeling. And, you know, this missing value clustering and the patterns that we're going to be talking about is part of understanding what we've got before I make a decision on how to handle it. Okay, so uh, what we're going to use, we're going to use the orange data set from the MISMDA package. Miss MDA has a lot of good features for imputation. Uh, we're not going to talk about that here because this is not the data prep course. This is the, you know, um, this is data mining two. So I'm assuming that you are already familiar with imputation. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the original data. All right, this is a very small data set. It's only 12 observations, but you can see I have a lot of missing values. So anytime I see an NA, that's a missing value. Also, uh, to get our markdown to show every show the output easier and in a cleaner manner. I put digits down to one. Um, if, if you actually look at the output on your machine, you're going to see a different number of digits. Everything here is rounded to one digit. All right, so 12 observations and uh, you know for 12 observations, there's a lot of missing values. All right, so first option we have to do is to throw out observations that have missing values. Well, if I do that, you'll see in this case, I have three, three observations. I really can't do much in statistics with three observations. So you can see that omitting, uh, very, omitting observations really is not a good choice in a lot of situations. The other option is to omit variables. That might be good, that might be bad, but for the problem I have, I might not have that option. So basically, uh, if I'm gonna be doing this clustering, I'm probably going to be doing imputation. Another reason why I would want to do this is I want to understand the data I throw out before I throw it out. Okay, so the HMISC package has a really nice function to handle missing value clustering for us. So it's called, it's the NAClus function. And what it does, it looks at, this, it measures how many times are both positive when it does its similarity uh, uh, situation. So the missing values, think of it as there's a one if it's missing, zero if it's not. Okay, we're gonna do hierarchical clustering on our missing values. Remember, for hierarchical clustering, I need two things. I need a similarity matrix or a dissimilarity matrix, depending on your point of view of that. And second, I need a linkage function. Okay, so the, this, function goes through and this looks at when they're both positive or both missing and that is the measurement that they come across for the similarity matrix or the dissimilarity matrix the, the, what we use for the dist function before then we pass in our methods for linkage we're going to use single linkage on this all right so for the examples here i'm using single linkage then i'm using ward d linkage and uh but remember that usually most people go with complete linkage. I feel like Ward D does actually a better job in actual applications, but a lot of people feel like complete linkage is a better choice. Uh, it's not that bad. I just think Ward D does a better job. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the plot. So I so we can see that pulp, acid, uh, uh, tack intensity, and sweetness are all clustered together for their missing values. So this is probably a feature in the measurements. So some people probably forgot to put it in or the machine wasn't working that day, uh, had, had a, uh, a new employee doing the measurements, we all know. And then we can see that uh, color intensity and bitterness 
are clustered together for missing values. So this is only on the missing values. It's not on the rest of the variables themselves. And then odor, intensity, and uh, typicity it, are also like coming together at the same point. Under single linkage, that is. Skips farther than I wanted to go. All right, now let's do ward D. All right, when I have ward D, looks a little bit e a little bit more even. I have attack intensity and sweetness together. Then acid comes in with those. Then pulp comes in. Then bitter. And then we have uh, these four coming together also. So this kind of gives me an insight into what's going on. What will frequently happen is when I have missing values in the in my data, uh, I'll have missing values kind of like happening at the same time, and that can help tip me off to features and patterns in how the data was recorded. So uh, I had personal experience. I was working on a project. I had a data set was given to me, and I saw that there was distinct patterns in the missing values. And so basically there were two, this is 100% true, but nearly, well, there, there, there were pretty much two distinct missing value patterns. And I figured out from this that what had happened was that there were two separate data sets and the people I was doing the project for, they put them together. But when you look at, looked at the data, these were data, data sets that should not have been put together. So what I went after I spotted this using my missing value analysis, I broke them apart and then I did the analysis on each part separately and I ended up getting a better, uh, better modeling off of that result. Yeah, a lot of times, uh, you, you know, there, there'll be features in the recording of your data that will be problematic that missing values can really tip you off to. And in that project, there were other missing values besides the, the two patterns, but when I, when I went through this process, it became very clear to me what was going on. All right, so now I wanna go through and I, I wanna plot the missing value uh, features of this. So what we're, uh, the HMIS package gives us four ways to do this. All right, so here we're looking at the fraction of missing values for each variable. So we can see typicity has zero and then color intensity has uh, less than 10%. And then, you know, color intensity and pulp have the same amount Attack intensity and acid have the same amount, and sweet and bitter have the same uh, number of, or yeah, same number of missing values. Now, on our next plot, what we want to do is we want to look at the number of missing uh, values per observation. So here, we can see that we've got zero uh, missing values, and that occurs three times. And so this gives me a plot to kind of understand you know, what it is, a, a, how many missing values do I have? How often do I have a, uh, like you might have a row that's almost all missing values. And this will tell you like how frequently that occurs. All right, so on this next one, we're looking at the mean number of other observations having missing values when the one that is plotted on the y-axis is missing. So what this is saying is that when odor intensity has a missing value, there are zero other observations that, are, that are zero other variables are missing. When pulp has a missing value, on average, there's two and a half missing values other, uh, elsewhere on that row of data. So this gives me a, an indication of like where, where do I have like corresponding missing values happening in my variables. It gives me an idea that you know pulp, there, there might be something going on with pulp, maybe the machine wasn't working, maybe the employee didn't know how to use it. All right, so here's the a uh, scatter plot of the fraction of missing values for the variable. And here is the average number of missing values for other variables when that variable has a missing value. And so, you know, we, we'd much rather be in like this corner down here. Here, you know, is where we, we don't want our variable to be.
and the HMIS package gives us a way real nicely to plot all four of these at one time. This is gonna look ugly on our markdown, but on your machine, it will look better. The last four plots are plotted here real easily. Uh, on my machine, when I wasn't using our markdown, uh, I was able to look at all four of them rather nicely. Now, next thing we want to take a look at are the actual patterns of missing values. And you know, something that you want to do is to start like looking at this and see if you can spot any features that are interesting. All right, so what I can see here is that I have all zeros. That means that there are no missing values. So that happens three times. Now here I've got one missing value and it's the third from the last variable and that happens twice. Now on this next one, we have three missing values in the middle, in the middle variables that happens once and you can see the pattern going along. So this is real nice, it's real compact. Uh, unfortunately, this doesn't really tell us which variables are missing. Like I can go look that up, but in this format, I don't see it immediately. So one thing I like to do is I go through and I make a matrix for missing value patterns. And I just take my data set, I go through and I replace, I, so I take each column and I check to see, is it missing or is it not missing? Then I convert it to a zero or one, it, one if it's missing, zero if it's not. And so now I have a matrix for missing value patterns. Now, next thing I do is I like to take a look at just what, what are the unique patterns? Is there anything jumping out at me? And I use unique statements. So what this does, this takes the unique rows uh, for missing value patterns. So I'll definitely have less than 12 rows because 12 was the original amount. Uh, so I'll lose some, some rows of data in this, but this is a more compact way to see what's going on. A lot of times I'll go through and I'll actually order these uh, by their values, order the rows, order the columns, so I can kind of see visually where things are. And now the next one, is I want to look at the unique columns. So previously I looked at the unique rows of missing values. Now I'm looking at the unique columns. Once I have this, these are my unique missing value patterns. I can actually use these as predictor variables when I'm uh, doing supervised learning. So something I want to do, if I'm going to impute on my data, I absolutely, truly, want to include the missing value patterns also with my data. You know, they'll actually include these as predictor variables. And what this does, this tells the model, hey, like the value that was in this position is surrogate data. So if I end up having a missing value pattern as being statistically important, that shows me that there might be, there's a relationship in there between uh, the missing value patterns and the, uh, and the target variable, which is something you really want to know if you're doing good predictive analytics. Well, that's all I've got. I hope you're staying safe. Hope you're having a great Memorial Day weekend. Take care.